Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Academy's 172nd. This is the FA18E or Echo Hornet. Okay, now recently we've seen a lot of 172nd scale kits come along and obviously we've got certain films that may be out next year now uh, and it's going to make this particular aircraft I think very, very popular, a bit like the F-14 was. And again, Fantastic to see it in certain scales. We've seen it recently just to arrive in 132nd scale uh, again. Uh, and to be honest, I think that one's got some issues, shall we say. The one that I think is the fantastic one is the 148 scale one by Hasegawa. But actually, 172nd, we haven't seen a really nice one. Although that said, I did build a 144 one a few months ago, and that was a beautiful kit as well, and that was Revel. But actually, it's really nice to see now that we've got a new tall one come along now in 172nd. It is a very, very important, I think, iconic aircraft. There's a lot of them around. I think there's something like um, 800 of these things flying around now, so uh, in one form or another. So I think it's one of those aircraft been slightly overlooked in the smaller scales. But Academy has come to our raid. Anyway, so as you can see, nice bit of box art, 50 anniversary one down in here. Okay, looking around on this one, as I say, we've got this one from the Downbusters. If you don't know the story of the Downbusters, uh, it's not obviously the RAF, as in 617. This was actually, I've got to remember, it's the Korean War actually hit a dam uh, during the Korean War. I think they flew Corsairs back then, uh, or something like that. And uh, But anyway, that's why they can call themselves Downbusters. They did breach a dam, uh, so that's how they get that iconic title. But anyway, Chippy Ho, as you can see on this one. Uh, as you can see, a measly £25, which isn't too bad for this one. So as you can see down here, I think we just get VFA uh, 195 on this one. That's the only markings we get in the box. Colour call outs, as you can see, all nicely done down in there as well. And then obviously your kit number for this one is 12565. Okay, and the decals by Cartograph. So, so far, so good. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't actually looked inside this box, which is amazing, because I've had it sat here for literally months, and I haven't actually got around to looking at it. But everyone has told me it's beautiful, so it'd be nice to see. Okay, so we've got various ones in. Usual thing, because obviously of the uh, Foxtrot and the Growler version, the G version, you're always going to get that modular front end on them, which we do here, in a light bluey grey plastic. Okay, here we go. So this is good old... Chippy Ho. Okay, so we've got some nice decals, and they are done by cartographs, that's quite nice. The obligatory how to model sheet. Okay, and I'm wondering if we've got an update to the manual, or that's just fallen out. No, I think manual one and two. Okay, so it goes on a little bit. Right, let's start with the instructions. So again, we've got the colour call outs all down in here as well. Starting off, so straight into the underside, we're putting in the actual, uh, this is the actuators for the ailerons and it's got the nav lights on the bottom of those down there. Nice big plugs, do like this. Hasegawa did this uh, on a recent build I was doing with theirs and it just makes the kit solid. Underwing sections, pretty much how every other uh, Hornet's ever gone together. We've got decals for the cockpit. Again, you've got two-seater cockpit because the Foxtrot and Growler, it's very easy as they convert to the single seat. Uh, so that's what they've done down in there. Tub, fuselage front going on the underside. That one's going down in there. We've got the rails going on the outside. So far, so good. All looks nice. Okay, front end going on. Again, pretty much every Hornet. Legacy or Super Hornet family all go together the same sort of way, so that's going in, and the back part going on there. We've got engines and nozzles being fitted down in the back, tailplanes being fitted on there, doors going right the way through and fitted on. Okay, then we've got, then we've got, we've got to figure out how to get in here. Okay, then we've got obviously wheels being fitted down there, separate hubs, nice touch for the scale, and then obviously front end being fitted down in there like that. We've got to remember where we are with all of these now. Right, that's that one. Then we're over to manual two. Okay, so on here we've got weapons. So you've got your standard sort of AMRAMs uh, being fitted down on there as well. We've got uh, more AMRAMs and then we've got uh, GPS guided bombs being fitted down on there as well. And then we've got some Sidewinder X's on the wingtips. Okay, fuel tanks being fitted down into that one as well. Centerline tank going on there. Pitot tubes, things like that, usual thing. Tail hook being fitted, sensors, HUD. Uh, windscreen, looks like it's one piece as well. And then that completes your build. Again, it's nice. It's a good scale, I think. These are absolutely fantastic. We're not going to worry about getting these out because, let's face it, they are cartograph, and as you can see, they look gorgeous. 
good solid colour and again quite nice with all of these the Hornet does have lots of cooling vents and these are obviously chaff things down on here stuff like that you've got all of those beautifully modelled we've got the walkways uh, areas the no steps slime lines things like that as you might imagine right the way over there so you've got all the decals you'd find on the bigger models down in here on the smaller one as well you got this giant sheet for placement so it's the usual thing, light and dark ghost grey, pretty straightforward with these. You've just got the little bulge underneath, but it just runs to the gun, to the tail. Nice straightforward one on there. Top side with those markings on there like that. And on the other side, we've just got one for the actual placement of all the stencil data. So as you can see, not tons of it, but there's enough to keep it looking busy and very, very nice. Okay, so that's pretty good with all of those. Right, let's get into the plastic. So we are in a seal bag, what do you know? Okay. Get in. So down in here we have the clear part. So I'll tell you what, just for a change, let's have a quick look at the clear part. And in these smaller scales, the clear parts are very, very important. It has come off, actually. It's one piece. So, you know, if that's not going to be going anywhere, but you can see it is totally crystal clear. Very, very nicely done in, indeed. And to be honest, not rocket science to take a razor saw to that, cut it, and you could have it in the open position. We've got a little one down in here for the HUD as well. Okay, so that's both of those. Let me just pop them back in here. To be honest, I'll probably keep this kit because I quite fancy building it. <laughs> okay, so softer plastic you can probably tell the way this is moving it's not hard crispy plastic but it does look very very nice indeed if we're honest okay and then it obviously if we switch over to the the close-up you can see the surface detail is absolutely fantastic we've got everything you'd want on there so we've got all your riveting detail uh, i don't know if the block three will have as much uh, detail on it but there we go this is obviously the earlier block one uh, sorry block two okay with you've got the exhausts over the back down the details down in there at the front we've got where the speed brakes would go which obviously molded in and then the front end looking very nice some of the smaller parts at the front so these little ones are those actuators down in there we've got the control sticks we've got the doors which are molded in one and again you're supposed to have that little mark in there as well so that's actually looking very very nice underneath here you can see actually really very nice good plug i like this plug system that they do these days because this plug the way it goes actually makes it a good solid model so i'd seen it on the smaller ones looks really nice okay tail planes again flaps molded in You've got the area for the slime line in the middle there and for the nav lights uh for me flashing away in that and the receivers so actually that's all very nice indeed underside Again, big old areas for putting in the pylons and don't panic about this business with them all poking outwards. I think they stick out by seven degrees or something else like that. Uh, it's just it's better separation if they're for jettison them from the aircraft. They come away cleaner from the aircraft apparently. It just looks odd when you first do it and the fuel tanks and things are all pointing in different directions to the aircraft, but there we go. Tail hook, we've got the uh, pods. So you've got your targeting pod down in here and the stage for it. There's your cockpit. Again, nice detail. So again, here, because of the glassworks different, you've got the two seat back and you've got the single seat back. And you can see how the back of those go on. You only get the one glass, so you don't get the option to do it, which is unfortunate. Something, again, that's slightly unfortunate, the Hornet has uh, notorious for when it's powered down, the tailplanes actually sit back, they lean back. Um, as it's in the power down position, uh, you know, so it'd have been quite nice. These are actually fixed in the horizontal, so a little bit on there would have been nice to see. But again, there's not much on those. They literally are composite material on those ones, so there's no real riveting or anything to see on those ones. But generally, very, very nice indeed. Okay, so front end and rear end, uh, taking care just back in here. So we've got the rear part, Again, all the detail you'd ever want and need. Standard sort of way that they go together, having the bottom sections down in here. Again, you, again, you sort of you could do it in flight, uh, but these here 
got big old areas for aiding, shall we say, uh, having the doors open. Now, I think they're completely overkill, which is a shame, but for the junior modeler coming in, that would actually be golden for them. It'll make it nice and easy to get the doors on there and stuff like that. But these are those locating areas. It's gonna make a good solid plug-in and that's really what you want, okay? But surface detail is absolutely fantastic. Catching it in the light there. Good, clean, crisp detail right the way through. Nice that we've got a slip molded nose. So normally you have a nose and then all this all has to go together. So this means it's very nice indeed. The only thing is, as you might tell here, this line along here is actually raised, which is a little bit odd because uh, you'd actually want it recessed and the rest of it's recessed as well. So this is obviously a, a molding type thing going on down in here. And there is a little bit of a, a line running down and in from obviously the molding mark. But again, that's not too bad. Generally though, that's probably easier to work with than it would be the other way around of having it two piece with a separate nose and gun as you find on the bigger ones. Okay, down in here, this is behind the actual cockpit section. So actually what happened is this will come in here. And again, you've got this plug-in system. So it literally pushes in, which again is a little bit weird, but it works. Okay, so that should aid building with a little bit of dry fitting. But again, nice details right the way through. No problem at all. So that's quite good. And then just down in here, we've got the seat. So again, not massive detail and you only get the one clearly. Okay, so into the, starting to get into the guts of it. Okay, we got seamless type way of doing the intakes almost because we've got no ejector pins down in these whatsoever and you've got the top half. So you will, they're not seamless as in totally, but there'll be a nice way of doing it. Main gear good plug-in units, things like that. And obviously the actuators for the gear, things like that is in there as well. We've got inside the wheel well, again, big old plunky plug-ins and that, nose gear, various things going on down in there. Okay, so that's not too bad at all. And then on this one, we've got the nozzles running around the back. We've got the tails, which again, we've got two types of tails, do we? Why are we getting two types of tail? I wasn't aware there was a difference. Um, so what do we got? One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, that's a bit odd, but there we go. So this is for the E, F and G tail. Uh, and the other one is for the E, F, G as well. I don't know actually why we're getting two vertical tails, but there we go. That's uh, a little bit weird, but you do. So hey, look, if you mess one up, you're good to go. Cockpit detail. Had combings for the rear, two types of seats, but that's just the cushions, obviously things like that back engines area. We have got some little nozzle detail down in there as you can probably see. So actually that's not too bad at all. Okay, and then last up we got weapons and pines, which to be honest, I don't think we need to get these out. They are just in halves. They are good, big, chunky areas for those going on there. Sidewinder X's, as I say, you've got your AMRAMs in multiples, GPS guided bombs and the pylons for those. And it's just a twin pack. Okay, it's an interesting kit, as in, I can see where they're going for this. This one's obviously clearly designed for the junior modeler who goes to an air show, they see these flying around, that's what they wanna build. Dad, I'll buy you the kit. I can see it exactly. For the more experienced modeler though, it's bordering on um, click and, you know, without using glue and click and play type thing and all the rest of it, purely because of some of the locating areas are hugely overdone. Uh, so, you know, like down in here, these are actually for the antenna, for the uh, pitot tubes, things like that. They're massive, chunky things, which don't get me wrong, they're a pain to put on when they're on a normal kit, but that might be a little bit overdone for here. Also, the way that this sort of front end is going in, it's gonna need a little bit of refining, I think, just to make that go in there. You've got raised detail with recessed detail because of the molding areas. Again, it makes it more simple for it going together because it's literally just a plug in front. So from a junior modeler's kit, I think it's excellent. If you've got you know, uh, a member of the family or friends and relatives and you wanna get them into modeling, it's probably a good kit to go with. It's very straightforward with the build, very simple build for it to go together. I'm just wondering though, for the more experienced modeler who loves 70 second scale, you're almost getting into the kids, you know, click and build type stuff rather than a normal kit, if that makes sense. So that's the only downside to it. 
All of that said, you could easily not worry about that, cut those off, make them up to your own, put your own ones in there, a little bit of plastic art, and bring it right up to a modern standard because the kit lends itself beautifully to it. But it just adds a little bit more work than you'd probably need to do. So again, it's definitely a kit of two halves. Fantastic for the kids, anyone coming into the modeling, anyone starting out in the hobby, no matter what age you are, highly, highly recommend it. If you are obviously a veteran modeler and all the rest of it, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade it a little bit just to get away from the clunkiness of some of the parts going together there giving it a little bit more finesse but generally for surface detail shape and all of those it looks absolutely spot on so there we go that's the academy 172nd fa18 echo